Hair simulation in Blender can be frustrating, especially when you need decent performance. Complex situations tend to slow things down, and getting hair to behave naturally without breaking your scene can be a real headache. Instead of relying on Blender's built-in hair physics, which can be pretty demanding, this add-on takes a different approach. It uses curve-based physics, making hair animation much faster and way easier to work with. It's built to work seamlessly with geometry nodes here. If your hair isn't already set up as a curve, Hairflow can convert it for you, whether it's coming from another hair system or even from certain mesh-based setups. That means you don't have to rebuild your hairstyle from scratch just to get it working. Once installed, Hairflow appears as a new tab in Blender's end panel. The first step is choosing the hair object and assigning a target, which is usually a character's head, but can also be a specific bone in an armature. If the hair isn't a proper curve object yet, Hairflow includes a conversion tool that transforms it while keeping materials and modifiers intact. It also creates a backup before making changes, so you don't lose anything if you need to adjust settings later. After setting the target, clicking Add Simulation binds the hair to the object and automatically applies transformations to keep everything in sync. If things don't look right after setup, it's usually a scaling or rotation issue, which can be fixed with a quick reset. When working with rigs, this add-on creates a proxy system to help bones drive hair movement more efficiently, preventing unexpected behavior when animating. Hairflow gives you a good amount of control over how the hair moves. The resolution setting determines how many control points each strand has. Lower values make the hair respond faster but with less detail, while higher values smooth things out but can slow performance. The affected length slider controls how much of the strand reacts to movement. A low value means only the tips will move, while a higher value allows the entire strands to follow motion. Hair stiffness controls how much these strands try to hold their original shape. Lower values make them more flexible, while higher values keep them more rigid. Reactivity determines how quickly the hair responds to movement affecting whether it flows slowly or snaps into place immediately. Gravity pulls the hair downward, but turning it off is useful for underwater or floating hair effects. Wind simulation is also built in, letting you add turbulence and directional forces to make the hair feel more dynamic. It works well for adding subtle motion, though it can impact performance if used heavily. The 1.1 update introduced two new features, radial force and frizz. Radial force spreads the strands outward, great for stylized effects like static electricity or exaggerated explosions. Frizz adds randomness to the strands, making them look more natural and slightly messy. Both settings give more variety to hair motion, making simulations feel less artificial. Since hair flow is curve-based rather than a full soft-body simulation, it performs well compared to Blender's built-in hair systems. That said, performance still depends on a few factors. The add-on resamples curves to keep point spacing even, which helps prevent unpredictable movement but can slow things down with very high strand counts. To counter this, Hairflow includes a proxy system that reduces the number of simulated hairs while keeping the overall shape intact. This is especially useful for dense hairstyles, making playback much smoother without losing too much detail. Hairflow also supports collision detection though it's more of a secondary correction than a full collision solver. It helps prevent hair from clipping through objects, but it's not perfect. Too much reliance on it can cause jittery movement or slow things down. I think the collision system still needs some improvements, especially when dealing with fast movements or complex interactions, as hair can sometimes behave unpredictably even with adjustments. One cool feature is the ability to attach objects to hair strands, making things like hair ties, beads, or other accessories move dynamically with the simulation. Instead of having to manually animate them, Hairflow lets you bind objects to hair strands using the Hair Objects modifier. To attach an object, you first select the hair, add the modifier, and choose what you want to bind. Positioning can be done manually by entering an index number. But there's also the Find Index tool, which detects the exact point on the strand where the object should be attached. Once set up, rotation can either follow the hair's natural movement or be stabilized using a reference object. This makes it much easier to add accessories that move realistically instead of just floating awkwardly in place. As useful as hair flow is, it's not perfect. Since the system is curve-driven, extreme movements or sudden camera shifts can sometimes make the hair behave unnaturally. 
It's not a full replacement for Blender, soft body, or cloth simulation. So if you're looking for ultra realistic hair motion, you might still run into some limitations. It also works best with Geometry Nodes hair, but if your setup relies heavily on mesh based modifiers, you might need to do some extra conversions. The add-on is designed specifically for curves, so more customized workflows may require some tweaking. For game assets, stylized animation, or real-time previews, Hairflow makes it possible to animate hair without completely tanking performance. Instead of relying on Blender's heavier physics simulations, it offers fast, responsive movement that still looks good. For cinematic animation, it works well when extreme physics interactions aren't necessary. The ability to fine-tune stiffness, gravity, and affected length makes it easy to get natural-looking movement without overcomplicating things. It won't replace a full physics-based hair system, but in a lot of cases, it's a solid alternative that speeds up the process without sacrificing too much quality. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.